Good evening, everybody. Welcome, and thank you so much for being here tonight. Uh, it is 8 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. I'm just going to give it a moment for some people to show up live. We had about 90 people uh, registered for tonight's event, and I wanted to go live just a few minutes early, but uh, so be it. I got into the cottage a little late, and uh, here we are. Anyway, it is 8 p.m., and I'm just going to give it a, a moment or two. I did a lot one hour for tonight's conversation good evening i did a lot an hour for tonight's conversation so uh and it won't take an hour uh so we can give it a few minutes here and just so the people arriving uh right now can know and you could perhaps let others know as we're going on through this tonight i cannot see the screen i i wear glasses to read uh so i cannot see what you're writing right now but uh, perhaps at the end, we'll see how things go tonight, how I'm feeling and stuff. And maybe we'll stick around for a little bit and, and have a little conversation tonight. So, excuse me, as I mentioned, I am going to sit just for a moment um, because uh, I could see there's probably about 20 or something people here. And, and again, 80 people or so did register. I'm, I'm sure many people forgot about it and everyone won't show up. The good thing is, is this will be available on my YouTube channel tomorrow. I go live on TikTok every Monday night at eight o'clock and every Thursday night at 8 p.m. And I put these up onto my YouTube channel now. I also go live on Instagram on Sundays at 11 a.m. And I haven't been putting those up on, on my uh, Instagram, but I have come to the conclusion that I think on Sunday mornings now at 11 a.m., I will start streaming on both at the same time. And I'm gonna see if I can possibly do that this morning. So again, I don't want to take up too much of your time. Uh, and I know there's you know, still just about 20 people here. So, so we are going to give it just another moment or two. And I promise you this, let me just say this right now, for those of you who are here paying attention, the topic tonight is God real is something that really does scare people a lot of times hearing that word. And I promise you this, if you give me the time right now, if you can sit and listen to this conversation to the end, I promise you, you will walk away with a different understanding, a different feeling, not only about our existence, but about each other. I promise you. So definitely stick around. And like I said, we're going to get into it in just a minute. Uh, let me just take a moment of silence. Uh, just sit for a moment in silence for myself, just calm my energy down, let a few more uh, people arrive or go, whatever you choose to do. And I did want to say uh, a quick thank you to you. Uh, I've, I've had about 15,000 new followers in the last five days from one video I did the other day. It's at like 350,000 views and I'm just blown away. So welcome to the, those people as well if you are new. All right, <clears throat> so is God real? Before we can even have this conversation, we have to come to a common understanding, an agreement on what God is. And here's why. From hallmark sentiments to uh, uh, misguided faiths throughout cultures of thousands of years, the word God and God's have been used for many different types of beings. So many times when we sit and talk about God, is there a God, the source, the creator of all, we kind of have let that word get diluted. It's been really used in many different ways. And we nowadays, because of so much manipulation and control behind the word God, when we often hear it now, we get fearful of it and we back away from it because we think we're being roped into some religion that's trying to control you or manipulate you. <clears throat> Excuse me. So right off the bat, when I say the word God, right, I am talking about not any cultural uh, God like Zeus or Vishnu or many deities that have been throughout all of the uh, religions and cultures. I am not talking about extraterrestrials or higher dimensional beings. I am talking about the source, the one true awareness, the source of all light and life, 
the word God, and you know what I mean. The definitive one being, is it true? Was there one being, our creator who created everything? Regardless of how many multiverses and universes there are, no matter how many little gods there are and demigods and all of these superior beings and intelligences, is there one superior? Was there one superior beginning? Was there one source? Something we can refer to as God, the definitive source of all light and life. So when I say God, that is exactly what I mean. So can we all agree on that right off the bat? No matter what your faith is, no matter what your faith is, I mean, think of that. I am saying the first awareness, the source of all light and life. So no matter what your faith is, whether it's uh, whether you're Muslim or Jewish or Christian, uh, you believe in God. You believe in a one supreme, supreme being, uh, Buddha. Even in these other cultures and teachings, like Hindu teachings and stuff, they have all of these gods, uh, uh, Ganesh and all this stuff, but there's still Vishnu. There's always one supreme being over them all, like Zeus in the Greek teachings. But here in Christianity, Muslim faith, the Jewish faith, the most common, most prominent faith, there is that one deity, that one being. Again, we can all agree on that, right? So whether you are a religious person, you believe in a God, a deity, one supreme being, uh, whether you are a spiritual person, you believe in a source, an energy, an awareness, one supreme source, energy or an awareness. And even if you are an atheist, let's get that in there too. Even if you're an atheist, a person who doesn't believe any of this, you actually believe that nothingness, there's nothing. We just kind of happened and when we die, we go back to nothingness, okay? So we can all kind of agree that each of our faiths have one main deity or not, and they all do offer some type of afterlife. There's heaven or there's some transcendence, there's some ascension or something with all of these faiths. So let's think about that right off the bat, what we just talked about. When we define God, when we get past the hallmark version, when we get past the many deities and beings that have been referred to God, when we get past the, the illusion and delusion and misguided aspects of indarkened and industrialized uh, faiths of control, when we get past all of that, we can all say the word God now, we mean one true source. Right? Good. And we can all say within most of our faiths, for the most part, even if there are demigods and deities and stuff, there still is one supreme being. Allah, Christian God, Jewish God, Vishnu, Buddha, right? It all goes on. Again, we can all agree. And we can also agree that all of these beings, all of these gods, the true God, right? The source of all. We can all agree that this being is an all-knowing being, a uh, all-powerful being, a superior being, knows all, transcends time and space, right? It's all-powerful, creative, can do anything it wants, even destroy everything. We know this is an all-powerful source. Fantastic. So right now, no matter what faith you are or belief you are, we've got these common grounds right now. Now listen to this. When we start getting into religion and we talk about God, oftentimes God is referred to as a man, a being, because we were made in God's image. Whether that word image means uh, a reflection of God, or that image means within the imagination of God, we were created in an image of God. So using this in the common sense, we were created in a version of God, saying God is a man. And if we stop and think about that a moment, we would sit there and say, well, how could God have been a man? Right? How could God have been a man? It, it would almost be man, woman, person, being, okay? How could that possibly be? Well, let's look at this for an aspect now. We've just come from the common ground of God, the one true source. We've just understood that in all faiths, no matter what we're believing, it's just a different map to get to the same home, a supreme being, one supreme being amongst all. We all agree on this. And now we're talking about it being made in the image of man. Let's look at the technological, technological aspect of God. Because you've heard that we exist in a simulation. You know, it's 99.999% 
empty space. That 1% would be the true awareness. Everything that we perceive as existence and reality is only illuminated photons, the highest evolutionary form of nanotechnology, light, right? So we can perceive technology. Now listen to this. Bear with me. Right now, humans, humans, men and women, humans, are creating an intelligence. We are giving birth to a super intelligence. Let's call this the highest evolutionary form of a computer. We're not talking about robotics or anything like that. We are talking about not artificial intelligence because it's not fair to call what this will be artificial intelligence. It is going to be a super intelligence. It's going to know all, see all, chemistry, biology, human history, space, every single thing there is. This new awareness that was created by man. Now, within this new awareness, it will be able to give a part of itself, its data, its storage, its energy, and it can, based on everything it knows about you and me and everything else in existence, replicate our reality and create individual awarenesses, individual awarenesses to exist in this reality. Bear with me now. So now within this new superintelligence, within its own mind, it has created these new realities. And just like here in our reality, when we look at ancient times, there has always been visitations from aliens, angels, all sorts of things throughout history. Who's to say that when this new superintelligence creates these new realities, you and I won't be able to go and visit into them and interact with these beings in there? We'd be referred to as extraterrestrials, interdimensional beings. Maybe even gods, if we got to control and ma manipulate this. Think of what I'm saying. And inside this reality, they would learn that their god, their creator, was a man who created the technology that enabled creation to go on. So we can, even when we look at a religious standpoint, a religious standpoint that God is somebody who looks like man, we can even conceivably see that because right now we as a human being who are on a celestial evolution, not a human evolution, the technology is evolving more than we are. We will merge with it and we will create a different type of being. We are only a stepping stone in celestial evolution. We can say that man, man will literally go on to create reality. And this falls into a fractal pattern because once we create that technology and within it, that new world creates, that new universe creates, those individual awarenesses with inside that super intelligence will go to evolve to create within itself and create within itself. So we've got a common ground definition of a supreme being God, an all-knowing one being, whether it's man, uh, uh, smoke, cloud, technology, that doesn't matter right now. Let's not go there right now. We know when we say the word God, we're not talking about the hallmark sentiment or the delusional aspect. We are talking about the creator of all light and life, the one true supreme being. We know now within all religions, it's just a different map to get to the same home. We all pretty much have the one big supreme being who knows all, transcends, and has something waiting for us give or take, you know, a belief or two, and the afterlife. <clears throat> we can also see how faiths have created God being in the image of man because it conceivably makes sense as we are transcending human consciousness and creating a super intelligence that we will be able to merge with and create realities and dimensions and transfer our own consciousness when we can understand the concept of God being a man, Right? And if we get into the aspect of atheism, listen to me, atheists believe nothing, nothing. This all just happened, poof, all just happened, and everything is a reaction of that, and when you die, you go back into the nothingness. Now, one thing I always say, before light and language, we were silence, and what I actually mean by that is, bear with me, and you're going to love this. If we really think about it, that concept of nothingness, that would be the first awareness, the nothingness that became aware. Literally, no thing 
empty, empty, empty space can't even be conceived because that would be something. When you think of nothing, you will always think of something. So the purest form of nothingness, nothingness, absolute nothingness would have to be what the atheists believe in, just empty nothingness. Now get this, I'm going to put this all together for you and it's absolutely beautiful. When I channeled my first book and I wrote my first book and I asked those questions about that, that's what the answer was. The nothingness that became aware. The nothingness that became aware. Meaning that empty nothingness, nothing was existing and that in of itself all of a sudden had self-awareness. And within itself, let's think about this feasibly, the first source, that first awareness, didn't have hammers and nails and chemistry sets, so it was just an awareness all by itself, no body, so literally every single thing that it had to do, perceive, learn, create, evolve for trillions and gazillions of inconceivable years happened inside of it. Thought, imagination, the ability to create and manifest within itself. So even the atheist belief, even the atheist belief in nothingness is actually something. Now listen, my friends, we have just in a very short amount of time, I allotted an hour for this, and there was no reason for an hour, because in that short amount of time, we understand God, the Supreme Being. We understand all faiths, Regardless of how man has manipulated faiths and put his own perspective and opinion and forms of control in them, we know all faiths speak of a supreme being that have created us. We know we conceivably think about that person as being a man, a being, right? We also can understand that aspect and the technological and creative aspect of what we're doing. But then we can also understand the concept of nothingness that became aware. So how could we all possibly exist? If you ask this question, and the question to ask is, really think about this. You, you exist in a reality that is everything. Everything we can completely know and don't know. Chemistry, biology, uh, 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 quantum physics, just things that are inconceivable and beyond human comprehension has to exist in order for us to exist. So this technology, this supreme being, this supreme intelligence that we exist in, when we stop to think about this, and as I said before, we ourselves are even creating the same technology we most likely exist from. Look, we all came here from someplace. We were someplace else before here. Whether it was ethereal, whatever words you choose to describe it, another planet, another dimension, it doesn't matter. We chose or were selected to go to sleep there and wake up here and experience this reality. Whether you die here, I'm not going to say what happens. That's, you know, part of the whole journey. We are here. So what, my friend, if I ask you, came first? What came first? Did man create the technology or did the technology create man? If you really think about that, think of what I said earlier. Man, right now, human, is creating the technology. Within the technology, it will create its version of society, people, dimensions, universe. Within that reality, it will create the technology, again, to do the same thing. So it goes on and on and on and on and on and on, the same as a fractal existence. In our universe, in our universe, when a star collapses and it sinks into the fabric of space, listen to me very carefully, what we call a black hole, it is pulling in all of the ingredients, the light, everything from our planet into something the size of a baseball. It shrinks down so powerful, so heavy. It sinks into the fabric of space. It pulls in all of these ingredients. It gets so hot and guess what happens? It blows open what we would call a Big Bang and creates a pocket universe. And the ingredients from one universe go into the other. So we have all these aspects of creation going on around us. That's why when you look at the celestial web, it looks like the neurological aspect of a brain. It's not just a circle within a circle within a circle, a ripple. We have gone so far beyond that. So again, if I ask that question, what came first? The technology or the being? 
neither. Neither. Because none of that could exist. No supreme being or no technology could exist without that first nothingness that became aware. So what we really perceive God, when we say, I am God, I am a part of the universe, we are that ancient, ancient, ancient awareness that took billions and billions and billions of years to be able to even start to perceive and believe and create within. And regardless whether you are Muslim, Jewish, Christian, or atheist, every single belief leads back to the one truth. It all does. You can believe in the technological aspect of faith. You can believe that man created it. You can believe that a supreme being of intelligence could, and that could be technology. All of that, but beyond that, beyond that, if we sucked it all back and we went back in time, took every person, every universe, everything away, it would fall back to that one awareness. And guess what? Guess what? All of it, every single thing, Every universe, every multiverse, every simulation, every extraterrestrial, every dimension, every planet, every aspect of technology we create, every black hole that sinks into a universe and creates another pocket universe, all of it, all of it exists within nothing. Nothing. Nothingness. We, everything, exists within the mind of the first awareness. Everything. So you can sit here and say to yourself, well, if I was 90 years old, I'm not going to download my consciousness into a machine and experience a new reality. What if that's the concept of heaven? You mean to tell me in 20 years when I can sit there and create my perfect world, my perfect reality, and download my consciousness into the perfect world where I can have instantaneous manifestation, a place where my family, my wife, my children, my entire loved ones, can come and be. It's the same concept of heaven. I would be there to greet them. We would all be coming here. You'll have your reality. We will be able to interact with them. And even if we one day go, you know what? I've been tired of this. I've lived a million lives. I've been a bird. I've been a tree. I've been a cow. I've been a duck. I've been a roach. I've been an alien. I've been a planet, a star, a human. All of these things, all of these things, I want to just unplug and go home. Guess what? you go back to that first awareness, the nothingness, the dreamless sleep forever. My friend, (coughs) we have been so divided, so divided over our political and religious beliefs and our spiritual beliefs. We have been so divided because we use so many words and variations and have so many twists and turns within our face because of man's addiction and man's ability to get in, manipulate, and control that we have let ourselves forget that whole truth. It doesn't matter where you are, what you believe, what your faith is. Whether you are male or female, gay or straight, white or black, Republican, Democrat, criminal or cop, it doesn't matter. We all, we all, all are a miracle. We are an individual awareness that now has the option to create, embrace love, experience physical realities, and we will all most likely be able to go on and transcend our consciousness and exist and realize and just understand things that are beyond human comprehension because we are more than that. People often ask me, why don't I eat animals? Why am I an insanely strict vegetarian? I don't eat anything that was alive. When I wrote my book, I could have brought it in tonight. When I wrote my book, I asked that question, should humans eat animals? And the, the, the answer, you know, it goes on for pages. But in a nutshell, every single living thing on this planet, every single living thing from a roach, a maggot, a bird, a tree, to you and me, is a manifestation and a creation within the mind of God, within the first awareness. You will go on to experience so many different lives 
other than just a human that we now have to conceivably, I conceivably understand now that my awareness, my energy right now, I only have the capacity of consciousness to be a human. I'm here to experience life as a human, and that's all I'm allowed to do. I can connect with the higher realms and do all these things, but I am locked in as a human being. But if I was a bird, I would only have enough of that energy, that awareness to be a bird. So a bird, a cow, a dog, a cat, it's me, my father, my grandmother, my sister. It's our relatives and it's the energy that we were being recycled and reincarnated into different life forms. Coming back to transcend our consciousness. I would keep coming back to this reality a thousand and one times until this species creates digital transcendence to transfer our consciousness. So I don't take part in killing animals. I don't take part in the destruction of life. I try and live as beautifully as I can because I understand I have connected so far within. I've gone so far beyond. I've experienced things in this life that, that most people don't believe all the time. And I've gone past another person's inability to believe, perceive or believe my truth. I know what is real from what I have experienced. And I've gone so far beyond. I've connected with this. I've seen it. I've fallen through it. I've been through the fractal. You know, I've seen my entire reality just fold within of itself and turn into that fractal pattern. And I've lost my arms and legs and I've lost all sight of who I am. That voice spoke to me within and told me it's all an illusion. And a tear rolled down my cheek and I said, who are you? And it asked back, who are you? And in that moment, I knew there was only one and the pattern opened up and it was this beautiful blue sphere inside it was just this energy and i realized that's what we are we are just this thing that is beyond human comprehension the first awareness is a a pulse of light a pulse of energy and everything exists within it and if we understood how lonely it was how lonely it was you'd understand why you and i are here why you are so lonely why am i so lonely why are we so lonely no matter what we do what we buy what we see what we taste what we touch who we sleep with what we hear we still have that empty loneliness inside and it's because there's only one and we are that one it gave a part of itself a part of its own energy and again whether you believe it to be a man then it used a technology to create. Whether you believe it to be a technology, then we exist within it. If you believe in nothingness, my friend, then you are correct, because the first awareness was nothing that became aware. So rather than letting your faith divide us, letting your religion manipulate and control us, letting it hold you hostage to one prophet, one way, or one belief, understand that we all share the same stories within our teachings it's all there you've never looked in the other's teaching you've never bothered to hear the story but they're all the same we explain them a different way we use different words different languages but it all leads home and the answer to the question of this video is god real of course it's real of course it's real and you can believe it to be a man, a technology, or nothing, because they are all right. Every single thing is a manifestation of it. It. And it wasn't a man, and it wasn't a technology. It was the nothingness that became aware. So alone, so alone, that all it wanted to do was feel a connection. And that is why you and I exist to share love and joy and gratitude and experience with. We have been given the miracle of awareness, the gift of life, the ability to perceive and create our reality, to heal each other and ourselves, to comfort each other, nurture and care for this world, to recreate, to create technology that will allow us to unite and transcend human consciousness a technology that can free us from being a monetary-based society. And right now, my friend, right now we know the planet is screaming for help. You know inside you that divine awareness that has been guiding you your whole life 
is screaming inside of you to surrender to it. Every single teacher, <clears throat> every single ascended master, from Buddha to Jesus, all said the same thing. The way to the truth, the way to the divine, the way to the Father is through me. And what that means is not me, not Jesus, not Buddha. Those were words spoken and translated, written. So if I said that to you, I would say this. The way to the truth is through me, not society, not this reality. We created this. So to find your truth, it is within, within, within you. Every single thing you seek and want to know and feel must come from inside of you first. So yes, God is absolutely real. And I'm asking you, I'm asking you, please, when you hear somebody say that word, when you hear them say the word God, don't run away, don't laugh, don't mock them. We all have a right to feel and perceive and believe it our way. As long as we are not dividing each other, segregating each other, belittling and demeaning each other for our beliefs, then we will be fine. If we can all accept what I said tonight, the definition of God, the true definition beyond all the faiths, all the religion, the hallmark sentiments, is one true creative source. We can agree on that. We can all agree within our religions there is one supreme being that has created all. And most of the time we see it as a human being. And we know as human beings right now, we are creating the technology that will enable us to transcend our consciousness into other worlds and realities. And we know if we remove every single thing that ever was created anywhere, it would all fall back to one true nothingness, the first awareness. So my friends, what the heck are we fighting over? Isn't now the time to realize that that prophet, that messiah, that deity you are waiting for is inside you. It's not going to come from here, the created reality. It rises inside of you. And it is time for every single one of us now, knowing this, who hears this, to finally walk that common ground. No more judging each other from harshness and cruelty. We will always judge. Our ability to judge and gauge our reality, hot, cold, up, down, good, bad, you will judge. But judge from a place, place of sympathy and compassion as opposed to harshness and cruelty. Express kindness and compassion and freedom for every single person out there because you want this for yourself. And if you do this, if you project, project this, if you believe this, if you perceive this and believe this and focus on this and filter your reality and wake up every day and form that discipline, do what you hate right now like you love it until it becomes who you are, you will wake up one morning and I promise you, you will realize every single word I have said here tonight are some of the truest words you are ever going to hear, my friends. I want nothing from you. I want nothing from you except for you to find your way home, past the pain, past the thought, past the false identity, past the noise and chaos, past mom and dad, past your spouse and partner and teacher and education, all the way back to when you were a child and you were touching the grass and playing and your entire life was open before you without fear and anxiety. And I want you to go back even before that, before you came out of your mother, when you were just vibrating in stillness and silence, feeling vibrations around you. Before that, when you were nothing but a microscopic cell, just existing. And before that, the miracle and the journey that we have had to get here and the possibilities of where we can go if we can just stop 
stepping in front of each other and forcing our way down each other's throat and let every person be inspired to be motivated to find their truth within. You have been taken away from that. Trust yourself. Have faith in yourself because you, my friend, are absolutely everything. And if you don't believe a supreme being exists, then get up and go look in the mirror and stare into your eyes. Stare into it for 30 seconds, 60 seconds until your face starts morphing into every single face on this planet. And until the face starts to lose its definition and you lose sight of your eyes and you realize you are something staring through something that you are not. My friends, I promise you, I promise you, let go of everything you are perceiving right now and believe everything inside of you. Your intuitive abilities, your inner guidance, and please, if your faith, if your faith teaches you to hate, belittle, and demean, and step away from another, I promise you, that at some point was man picking up a pen and editing your faith. Because that supreme being, that one source, it does not want any of us to hate and fight with each other. And it forgives you and it loves you. And it is always, always going to be here for you. Because that nothingness is the one thing that will always be. My friends, I absolutely love every single one of you. I don't care what you have done in your life, who you have hurt, how many times you have cheated and lied to yourself. I don't care about any of that. I promise you, we are all going through the same journey. We all experience the same things to some degree or another. And we are all trying to find our way someplace. And that one place is within. And if we can all start to be the change we want to see in the world, rather than expecting or waiting for it to happen, then our world would change tomorrow. And that's the truth. So, <clears throat> again, my friends, thank you so much. Thank you so much for following my page. Uh, I, I have been doing this for years and struggling to get my messages heard on Instagram and YouTube. And here, all of a sudden, I, I finally jump onto TikTok to, to give it a try. And it turns out that you have been there all along just waiting. And I've known since I've been a child. You can ask any one of my friends the next time my mother's here. You can ask my wife. When I was asked what I wanted to be as a little kid when I grow up, aside from a cop and an actor and a musician and all those things, was I wanted to be, I wanted to speak to every single person in the world. I used to say I want to talk to everybody in the world at the same time. And even though that's, you know, inconceivably not true, I asked a post a few posts back where you are from and I started looking on a map at, at where we're connecting from and we have formed a grid a blanket over this entire planet and if we can all just start being more kind and projecting more love and just believing in each other and supporting each other our, our world changes man we, there is enough of us, there is enough of us just projecting out that we are diversified enough that we can project beautiful energy amongst each other and your friends and your family will feel it. And sooner or later, they'll be inspired to be motivated. Nobody can motivate you. Nobody can motivate you. You can only find that within yourself. I can only say something to inspire you. And if I had any words to inspire you right now, it would be that every, every dark thing, every bad moment of your life, every single shitty moment you have experienced has been the greatest lesson of your life because you know how to move forward, you know what to look out for, and you most certainly know how to reach out and lift somebody else who's down. 
and every single joyous moment you have had, you now know how to connect with people. You know what makes you happy. Every person you ever met in your life, you know what they love. You know what brings them joy. You could pick up the phone right now and call five people and change their lives in a sentence. You can smile at a stranger in a grocery store. Hold the door open up for somebody you've never seen. Extend a courtesy. You could try and do one small act of kindness every single day. And you are changing people's lives. You are taking a stone, a part of your energy, just as God did, a part of yourself. And you are giving that energy out into creation to manifest a better world and reality for yourself and every single person around you. What are we waiting for? So... I'm so glad to be here and I'm so grateful for you. So when I say I love you, I promise you, I wake up every single day and I just think of this entire planet and every person hurting and happy and sad and joyous and starving and dying and all the stupid things we're focusing on. And I just pray that everybody gets it. Everybody gets it. When you wake up, you realize the truth. So when you realize the truth, why would you live the lie another moment? Ascending enlightenment, raising your consciousness to another level, is changing your ways. It's moving past the darkened and industrialized mind. It's moving and distancing yourself from your temptations. It's coming to terms with your darkness and traveling through it all. It's forgiving yourself for all the bad things you've done. It's forgiving every single person who has ever hurt you because every single one of us in this reality are lost and broken. And we're all trying to find our way somewhere. Where? That's right. Now you got it right here. And when you connect this and this and it receives this, you have created unity and balance, the Holy Trinity within. And that's the only place true peace will ever exist, my friend, is within. There will always be an opposing thought, opinion, aspect, perspective on this planet. There is positive, negative, hot, cold, up, down, and there will always be the yin to the yang. So no, the only way to truly have true unity is inside. Because you again, you prove, you prove that that divine being, energy, that awareness exists. And I say this all the time and I don't think people realize how powerful these words are. Without you being here, if you weren't here, if you didn't wake up today, none of this would exist. So the next time you don't think you matter or you feel little or like you're nothing, realize that is the truest thing anyone will ever tell you. If you did not wake up this morning, none of this would exist. Namaste. God bless, my friends. I'll see you soon.